this is a continuation video from my last theory, Origins of the Plush, because I realised that I've overlooked a few details that I need to comment on. I've just been checking on the AFMAL wiki once again, as I do periodically, and I was revisiting the, um, the page on Wolf, well, it says Wolf, but we know that it means on the plush, and I realised that I've missed out some details. There is a paragraph that I need to read from this. It says, it wasn't until an apology that she had nothing to say, but started talking again in Will He Say Yes, after noticing how much pain Athmau was in. In Wolf Plush, IN TROUBLE! It was confirmed that she is indeed alive and has a mind of her own. Kawai Chan was even able to hear her screaming. She was also shown to be able to cry and wink. So it seems that I was mistaken in the fact that Woof doesn't have movement. I must have missed out the fact that she's sometimes been able to cry and wink. And plus you could kind of say that even the sweat, um, the sweat emotional image on her, the one that's superimposed, you could even argue that that is actually her sweat. I don't actually know for certain why this is, although, again, I'm a theorist, so it's my job to think of reasons as to why that might be. So, that's what I'm doing. The part of that sentence that really strikes me was that Kawaii chan was able to hear Woof screaming. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot that in the episode. Granted, I usually watch back the episodes in order to figure out what's exactly is going on before I do a theory on someone, but this time I admittedly did not. So, once again, let's dive into the mindset of cerebral magic and how it works and try and find out how this autonomous connection was somehow broken by, by Kawaii Chan hearing Woof scream. So, the first option that there might be is that Woof's scream was so agonizing because of the fear that she experienced that anyone could have heard this particular scream because it was such a great cry of distress. However, this theory I don't think makes sense because if that were the case, then Woof would have done the exact same when Nekoet was kidnapping her. Yes, she wasn't scared for her life, but she was being taken away from her girl, which must be, which must be really endangering to something, to an object that has such a connection, has been essentially brought to life by somebody else. Granted, it, it happened before, and it's quite possible that if Worf had been taken, then Nekoet would have probably found a different home for Worf, and the same thing would have possibly happened again. Bear in mind, the spell is still there. Because we know that Aaron didn't place that himself on there, and it's likely that Derek didn't from last episode. I think it was somebody who worked on um, the merch line, like I talked about before. <clears throat> that being said, there's also a theory that that is because Kawaii Chan has Mifwa ears that she's able to hear this kind of thing. Someone could argue that, but I say the same thing. It would have been the same for Nekoet. And if you think about it, the range of human hearing decreases with age. So if it's the same for Mifwa, then I then it's quite then it would make sense that Nekoet would more likely to hear Woof than Kawaii Chan were. But it's the other way round. I've tried to look up um, the range of cat hearing and how that's affected with age, but there's nothing that's was immediately obvious in whether cats lose part of their hearing with age. I assume that it's quite possible that this does happen, but I've got nothing to confirm or deny that. But then again, even so, same rules that apply to Kawaii Chan would apply to Nekoet in that instance. Because even though it's possible that, I don't know, through cat DNA that Mifwa hear better when they're older, it's more likely to be the other way round. Plus, Kawaii Chan at that point is 18 years old. Same age as me, actually. So, 
her hearing should, by human laws, still be perfect. And you can tell that Mifu are age at the same rate as humans, because they have the exact same years. So those things are thrown out of the way. However, there is one other explanation which I think solves this. We are going to look at Kawai Chan's counterpart, once again going back to her first appearance. And by that, I do not mean in my street. No. We're going back to Minecraft Diaries once again. So let's see. According to the wiki, her first appearance is when Athmel first met her maid cafe on the her way to Scaleswind. She said her name was Miss Kawaii, but Afma could call her Kawaii-chan. The wiki page for Kawaii-chan's Minecraft Diaries counterpart doesn't actually say what I needed to st it to say, but it does detail about her little maids. Her little maids, of course, are an item that is brought to life. She can create from different from different inanimate objects and bring them to life, which sounds kind of similar to what the Lycan Corporation's merch line is doing, if you agree with my last theory. Obviously, Woof doesn't go quite as far as having full movement, but perhaps this spell has varying degrees, and it's quite possible that someone using the same kind of magics as Kawai Chan's Minecraft Diaries counterpart is using could have been responsible for at least the animated proportion of that spell. This is Future Jacob making an edit. I've looked on the wiki page again, and it turns out that Gawai Chan's weapon is listed as animation magics. So that is how the spell to, well, or the ability to create animated life would be. So I guess that does make sense. For the record, cerebral magic will still remain as the magic that affects the brain, but animation magics apparently is a completely different spell according to the FMA continuity. So yeah, animation magics. As for the as for the cerebral connection, I don't know if that's a different department or it could indeed be the same person. That much I don't think I'm ever going to be able to determine one or the other. However, it is known that you can only learn one form of magics, unlike witchcraft, where you can basically learn whichever, where, how many different types you want. So, depending on whether on whether one spell creates this connection or not is unknown. Although we do know that it is Kawai Chan who brings these maids to life, and they basically serve whoever they are immediately linked to. So it could indeed be the same spell called. Animation magics. In which case it falls under the categories of cerebral magic. So you would think that possibly Kawai Chan in my street, if we're going with this and with the idea that I presented in The Truth About Travis, that it's possible that the characters in Minecraft Diaries and My Street possess the same powers, even if they don't know that they do, then it is entirely probable that Kawai Chan, having these powers of cerebral magic herself, would have been unaffected by it. However, if we consider that, that brings up two problems. One, that that goes against my first theory on Travis, that everyone was affected by this memory spell and could not remember who Travis was. And it also goes against the canon use of Jean's memory spell to make people forget about Dante. Which actually, I think, is actually kind of confirmation that it is possible to do that kind of thing. In both those instances, Kawai Chan is indeed affected by that spell. Although, if that spell, if you follow the theory, was done by a human, in this case, Jean, or, well, Shadow Knight, by a Shadow Knight slash human, in both instances. Whereas, cerebral magic from an inanimate object is an indirect form of cerebral magic, because that object is affected by the spell. It is not creating the spell. So, by that logic, the magic would be 
would be lessened or it would be of a different nature where a human having more of these powers, or in this case, a Mifwa having more of these powers, would be able to be immune to said form of magics. And even this works with conjunction to Nekoet, because of course Nekoet in Minecraft Diaries is Kawai Chan's daughter. But in this case, she's actually Kawai Chan's disciple, and we don't know if they're related or not. It's still possible, Kawai Chan did say she has 11 brothers and sisters. One of them could indeed be Nekoet's mother or father, and just didn't know about it, because again, with big families, it is very hard to track down all of your relatives. I don't know from personal experience, but it is very difficult. I know a person who has 14 cousins and has to name them all in a particular order to make sure he's mentioned all of them. So you can imagine with 11 brothers and sisters, how many cousins will be born in the next generation. So it's quite possible that she is somehow related to Kawaii Chan, but we don't know that for certain. And it's quite possible that she isn't. If it turns out that Nekoet is related to Kawaii Chan, then it's more likely that this magic's tre like some technique would work, well, this magic's ability, which would have been passed down through the generations, would be passed down to Nekoet as well. At which point you can take one of two options. One, that Nekoet simply doesn't have that ability yet, and it is realised later on in life, or that this theory is wrong. One of those two options would apply. 50-50 chance that this theory still stands, and you know what? I would be fine with that, because as it is, theories indeed don't have an exact probability of occurring. That's kind of the fun of them. There's so many things you can't confirm or deny, but all you can do is present the evidence and let people draw their own conclusions. And on that note, until next time, farewell. Was it